Okay, so it says, Mon amour, here we go. Can't wait to see you at the end of the aisle later. Here's to forever. P.S. I can't wait to be Mrs. Yusa. Always my love and for keeps. Let's enjoy and cherish every single moment. And she's right. Let's do it. <laughs>
very emotional up here. <laughs> but good afternoon to everybody. It's so great to have you at this very special occasion as family and friends as we come to just witness the joining of a very special couple together. And we just want to commit this time to the Lord in prayer. So let us pray together. And Lord, we pray your blessing upon our time together here this afternoon as we witness with Erwin and Anne the, the sharing of their vows and their commitment to each other. May your Holy Spirit be so evident amongst us here this afternoon. And we pray your blessing upon this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Erwin and Anne, as you make your commitment to each other in front of your family and friends. And I just want to take a few moments to share from God's Word uh, here today. You know, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts I have towards you, says the Lord, thoughts to bless you and that you have a purpose, special uh, place in God's heart. But I want to read two scriptures uh, here this afternoon, John 10 verse 9. Jesus says the following words, he says, I am the door, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The second verse is Revelation 4 verse 1, it says, After these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking to me, saying, Come up here and I will show you things which you must take after this. And you know, as I was reflecting on those two passages of Scripture, the one word that kept ringing home to me was the word door. And I really believe you guys as a couple are going to go through many doors of opportunity. And I believe as you journey together, you're going to find doors opening in front of you that God's going to use you, not only as a married couple, but as individuals. There will be doors of opportunity, but I believe in, even in the way you are profiled and you have influence in the world today, I believe you're going to be showing that door to so many people. First of all, the door to salvation and knowing Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. But there are people in the world today who are depressed. I believe that you're going to show them the door of hope. There are people who are going to be discouraged and just by a few words, you're going to be sharing words of encouragement that's going to change people's lives. I believe even in your example of your marriage, it's going to be a door that will, be, that will open to so many other people who are going to look at your marriage, your union, and say, this is going to give me hope and purpose for my life. But I don't want to talk or prophesy about your future. I want to speak about your marriage. How many of you are married here today? Raise your hands. How many of you are hoping to be married one day? All right, so I think what I'm going to share will apply to every single person here, but specifically to both of you. I've taken the word doors and I've used an acrostic and I'm taking each one of the letters and I just want to share briefly some gold nuggets that I want to encourage you as you start this exciting journey of marriage. Door, the D in door stands for decide today what kind of marriage you want. And when you decide what kind of marriage you want, you need to decide on your words and actions to match up what you decide. So if you want a great, awesome, happy marriage, you have to sow that into your union. The Bible says you will sow what you sow, you're going to reap. If you sow bitterness, guess what you're going to get? But if you sow love, kindness, joy into your union, I believe that's what you're going to reap. And so decide today, maybe on the boat trip over, decide today what kind of marriage you want and then make sure your words and action tie up to what you decide. The O in doors stands for oxygen. Everybody here today, we need oxygen to breathe. If there's no oxygen, you will not be here. And in your union as a married couple, decide on what's the oxygen that's going to keep my marriage alive. 
because if you don't have oxygen keeping it alive, your marriage is going to die. So what are the things that will keep your marriage alive? What will be the oxygen? I thought of three things and in all my marriage counseling over many, many years, this is what I wanted, the three things to keep your marriage alive. Number one, encouragement. Look for every opportunity to encourage and build one another up every day. Look for those opportunities and use words to encourage one another. Secondly, communication. Spoke about it yesterday. Communication is critical. I think when God created us with two ears and one mouth, I think he, he wants to bring a message across. And sometimes we need to listen more than speak. And communication is not watching TV together. You know, communication is not reading the newspaper together. Communication is looking at each other and talking and asking questions. Communication. And thirdly, what's the oxygen that keeps a marriage alive? Make sure you keep the fire of re being romantic burning in your life. Never ever let the fire or the flame of romanticism go out in your union. The other O indoor stands for overcoming. You are a team. Today in the sight of God, you become one. You're a team. Together, each achieves much more. And when you face challenges in life, and you will face challenges in life, I've been married 35 years, we've faced lots of challenges, but we've worked together. There is power in agreement. And as I said to you yesterday, if I had a sports jersey here, I would put it on both of you. Remember, you, you're on the same team. You both want to win in life. When you look at each other, you're not the opposition. You're on the same team. And you can overcome and you can stand and withstand whatever comes your way in your future if you work together as a team. I know some of you are trying to work out the R already. Anybody want to help me with that one? Nobody? Respect. Respect. And I looked up, uh, uh, I love Google. Google explains things sometimes so well. Respect is a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something uh, elicited by their abilities, qualities, and achievements. I want to encourage you in all that you do in life, make sure you respect one another as a man and as a woman. Lastly, for doors, is seek first the kingdom of God. You know, one of my favorite passages of scripture that I share at every single wedding, Matthew chapter six, verse 33, it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. I wanna encourage you, put God first in your life. Make sure that he is the, the foundation, the bedrock of your union and I really believe no matter what comes your way, I believe you will have a, a beautiful, successful and amazing marriage that other people are going to look at and say, wow, I want to be like them. Build it God's way and you will walk into the favor and the blessing of God. Father, I just pray for that word here this afternoon for Erwin and Anne. Lord, I know that there are going to be so many doors. Doors is going to meet so, so many different things to them personally, but I believe there will be doors that will touch and impact other people's lives by the way they live their lives and the way they model things to this, to people around them, their family, their friends, and people that they have influence over. I pray your blessing upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to be your morning light And the sun come up with you by my side I just want to be your morning light Fire burns down in the embers slow I 
burns down in the embers slow. Do you, Erwin, yourself, take Anne Curtis Smith to be your wife? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? If you do, say, I do. I do. Did the people at the back hear that? Um, Erwin, I think it's going to have to be a much louder, I do. I do. Okay. Do you, Ern, and Curtis Smith, take Erwin Yusuf to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him, as long as you both shall live? If you do, say, I do. I do. Louder. <laughs> I don't think Anne can get away from that. Okay. I do! <laughs> Mon amour, <laughs> who would have thought that you tricking me about eight years ago into knowing or believing that you knew all the constellations <laughs> would lead to us here today? It's been quite a roller coaster. We've had our ups and downs, our twisties and twirlies but we never let go. You taught and made me believe in magic again. You took what was broken and all of its craziness and made it whole again. Even when my insecurities come out and you know how bad it can get. <laughs> You never let go, but instead, you had faith in me, encouraged me, and pushed me towards bringing out the best in me. Thank you for not trying to change who I am, but choosing to love who I was, who I am, and who I've yet to become. As you know, Monamo, I always have to be strong for everyone around me. But when I can't, it's in your arms that I find comfort in. As you know, I always have to be upbeat and bubbly. But when I get tired, it's by your side. I find peace sitting in, in absolute silence with, and it's okay. But now I will communicate more. <laughs> Thank you for being my home that keeps me safe, no matter what storms come my way. We've had an amazing seven years of being together learning more about each other each day, each week, each month, always finding something new to love and sometimes hate about each other, but choosing to love it anyway. I love that we share all the many beautiful things that life and God has given us, from traveling and eating our way around the world together or be just side by side, jumping around crazy in a music festival together. And we do these things alone, just you and I. From now on, Monamo, a lot of things will be just you and I. From this day forward, there is no me without you and you without me. <laughs> I vow to love you 
under any circumstances. Happy or sad, rainy, sunny, windy or snowy, polite, and yes, even when I'm hangry. I vow to turn off the light when I'm the last one to bed. I vow to try and control my emotions when you give me that tone. I vow to always make you happy that you whistle around the house every day. And most importantly, I vow to love the fat kid inside when he decides to come out again. <laughs> Mon amour, as you know, I've always been one who loves great love stories, getting lost in books and K-drama series. <laughs> I've always believed in dreams coming true and going on great adventures. And as I embark on my greatest adventure ever, I couldn't be more excited that it's with you. <sighs> For you are my greatest adventure. You are a wondrous dream. And our love story is my favorite book. Je t'aime mon amour. It's always been very difficult for me to express my emotions. Um, I r don't really know where it comes from. It's just not in my nature. And I know that this can be a very frustrating trait. So to stand here today in front of all these people is going to be very interesting. <laughs> That's why I've always enjoyed writing. It helps give a voice to my feelings. Funnily enough, since the day I've met you, I've written more each day. From <laughs> From flirty text messages to unreadable late night advances, to love letters, some sent, some never to see the light of the day, to random scratchings hidden in your luggage before a long trip. I write to you even when you're not around, always asking myself what you would think, a constant soundboard echoing any decision I make. Without noticing it, you've made me want to tell a story and compile it, in fear that one day I would have to read it back just to remember us knowing that whatever happened, I could keep you in my back pocket, a tucked away novel that I could look for for hope. This one is about people who no one could have ever imagined being together. We couldn't have been more different when we first met and probably didn't strike anyone as a likely match. We tested and strained our relationship, bringing it to great heights with deep falls right ahead but eventually managed to be here today as a team. Some people see marriage as the truest testament of love, the culmination of a relationship. I don't. It's a pretty poem, but it's riddled with subtext. Any married couple here today can probably attest to this being our first day in a very long journey. I now know that the last eight years was just a warm up for the next 70. In the last one alone, I've noticed that I've learned something new about you every day. It's like gazing up at the stars that I know so much about. <laughs> it feels familiar, but every night something changes, making it hard to look away. We are very different people um, than who we are once, who, are, who we are now. A familiar constellation shaped by compromise and understanding and a consciousness of our personality as two individuals, always together but never stuck. You've asked me countless of times why I love you. You curl up towards me, looking up at me expectingly, the perfect answer, but I could never truly explain it to you. Reducing all my emotions to a few cliff notes is impossible. I love you because you are true to who you are, sometimes a little stubbornly, because of how emotional you get about your family, how people's happiness is a priority in your everyday, how bothered you get by their opinions, 
yet still believe that you are a great singer. I love you because you make me feel and inspire me to be the best at absolutely everything I try. I love that you trust that at the end of the day, whatever it may be, I'll take care of it. Mostly I love you because you're a work in progress. Today I vow to you that we will always be a works in progress. An unfinished book that just won't end. One that has to be nurtured, filled with cute little children, ambitious travel itineraries, morning workouts, ridiculous fights, passionate embraces, faith, and wrinkled skins. Daily Adventures of the Mundane. Sometimes we will have to close this book, sitting, sitting over it in one of our moments of shared silence, comforted by our presence. Other days we will have to scrap the whole chapters, switching plot lines, and starting fresh with a renewed perspective on life. I can't tell you what will happen in 20 or 50 years, but I'm happy knowing that I'll right be up. Oh, but I'm happy knowing that I'll be right there next to you, seeing you as I see you now. Whatever it is, I'm all in for all of it. Today, I vow to be your humble co-star in the most genuine love story ever told. And I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and faithfulness to you. I want, with this ring I be wed, wear this ring as a symbol of my love and devotion to you. <laughs> as a representative of Almighty God and in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, I declare that you've been lawfully married, your husband and wife. You may now kiss the bride. Oh,